Today we're talking about IPOs coming out the week of September 21st. Just like every week, if you're looking for all the opportunities investing in newly available companies, you've come to the right place. Welcome to Healthy, Wealthy, and Wise and our weekly featured show, IPO This Week, where we cover all the companies going public plus all the lockup and notable quiet period expirations each week. My name is Kevin, and I want to thank all of you for continuing to come back each and every week, and in some cases, some of you checking out the show for the first time. My goal for IPO this week is to hopefully save you time by pulling information in from a variety of sources for all the week's upcoming IPOs and sharing it in a convenient way with you. If you find this helpful, please consider liking this video so I know that this is the information you want to keep getting. I'm not going to lie, I'm still catching my breath from the frenzy of IPOs last week. Those four big tech companies, including Snowflake, was just insane. This week sets up to be a little calmer, as we currently have eight companies on the schedule, so still somewhat busy, but at least we're back into single digits. The other thing to note, in case you missed it, is that Palantir, who was originally supposed to go public this week, ended up pushing their listing back to next week, now expected on September 29th. Which is a good reminder that you always want to remember that information with IPOs is fluid, as the dates and offering sizes often change. I do try to post updates to keep everyone updated, although anyone is welcome to post updates in the comments if you get to it first. And just a quick reminder that while this video is meant to be informative, it should not be seen as a recommendation for you to take any action on the companies covered. You should always do your own research or consult with your own financial advisor when making any investment decision. So let's get to it. Kicking off this week's IPOs, we have Aimsight, ticker AMST, a company based in Detroit, Michigan, which provides an artificial intelligence driven platform for developing online learning products. The company was founded to design scalable, customized education courses that are responsive to learning dynamics through its machine learning system. Customers include businesses, universities and colleges, elementary schools and high schools. The company has a short operating history in online programs and has only generated less than $60,000 in revenue in the fiscal year 2020. According to a 2020 market research by Technavio, the U.S. market for e-learning is forecasted to grow by over $21 billion from 2020 to 2024, a forecasted compound annual growth rate of 9.8%. The main reasons for this expected growth are cited as an increased consumer demand for more cost-efficient and time-flexible learning programs available on multiple devices rather than having to go to a physical classroom. Another reason mentioned was the high adoption of mobile devices and the reduction in the cost of internet bandwidth, which makes the entry cost for consumers lower than in previous years. The company looks to have their IPO on Tuesday, with pricing set with an expected pricing range of $4.50 to $5.50. Trading should then begin on Wednesday. Next we have Bentley Systems, ticker BSY, which is a company that provides engineering software for construction and infrastructure projects. The company was founded to develop workflow software for infrastructure engineering for public works in industrial and commercial facilities worldwide. While the company operates in a cyclical market, the company has delivered profitability with strong margins. According to a 2018 market research report by the Business Research Company, the global market for infrastructure software was estimated $231 billion in 2017, with Western Europe as the largest region accounting for 36% of global demand and the U.S. representing another 21.4%. The company is showing growth in revenue, gross margins, cash flow, and in its gross profit. The company plans to raise $194 million at a $4.9 billion market cap, with all the proceeds from the sale going to selling shareholders, so the company itself will not receive any capital. Bentley has paid a quarterly dividend, and according to their S1 filing, plans continuing to do so. The company looks to also have their IPO on Tuesday, with pricing set within an expected pricing range of $17 to $19, with trading then beginning on Wednesday. Up next, we have Corsair Gaming, ticker CRSR. Corsair is a leading global provider of high-performance PC and console platform hardware peripherals, components, and systems for gamers and content creators. The hardware they offer includes PCs, streaming gear, controllers, microphones, cameras, software, and other accessories. The company sells its products through its own website to approximately 50 retailers and over 160 distributors. Through their distributors, their products end up being sold at thousands of smaller online and brick and mortar retailers. Corsair also sells products on Amazon.com, which for the six months ended June 30th, 2020, accounted for almost 27% of its total revenue. According to a 2020 market research report by John Petty Research, the global market for PC gaming hardware is expected to reach $37 billion by 2022, which represents a forecasted compound annual growth rate of 1.05% from 2018 to 2022. The report cites that the limited growth rate is expected because of the do-it-yourself market, although pre-built and custom pre-built PCs may be a positive factor for growth. 
Corsair has demonstrated a growing share in the competitive $30 plus billion global market. The financials showed growing revenue, a positive EBITDA, and higher margins. The company plans to raise $238 million at a $1.7 billion market cap, with its IPO also being scheduled for Tuesday with trading on Wednesday. Pricing is expected to be set in a range of $16 to $18. Next up, we have a plant-based beverage manufacturer named Lair Superfood, ticker LSF. The company manufactures and markets differentiated plant-based and functional foods, generating a majority of revenue from its superfood creamer coffee creamers. Lair distributes its products online, wholesale, and food service. Online, they sell through its dedicated website and on Amazon, which for the last year and a half made up just under 60% of its total net sales. According to a 2019 market research report by Food Business News, the U.S. market for organic food reached an estimated $47.9 billion in 2018, growing by 5.9% in that year, with organic food sales accounting for 5.7% of total U.S. food sales. The company has demonstrated strong growth but is unprofitable, and gross margins have declined in the first half of this year. The company plans to raise $42 million at a $167 million market cap, with the IPO set for, you guessed it, Tuesday, with pricing expected to come within a range of $18 and $20. We're halfway through. Next up, we have a preclinical biotech named Tasha Gene Therapies, ticker TSHA, who plans to raise $125 million at a market cap of $725 million. The company is developing gene therapies for a variety of rare neurodegenerative genetic diseases. It plans to initiate a phase 1-2 trial for its lead candidate in Canada by the end of 2020. In addition, it plans to submit for four additional programs to the FDA by the end of 2021. Needless to say, with new products on the market, they aren't generating any revenue and at the stage they're at, won't be for the next few years at least. The company has its IPO set for Wednesday, finally a different day, with pricing expected to come within a range of $18 to $20. Trading will then begin on Thursday. Next up, we have a Brazilian energy solutions provider named Hygo Energy Transition, ticker HYGO. Hygo Energy provides integrated downstream liquefied natural gas solutions and has historically derived the majority of its revenue from liquefied natural gas carriers, which it expects to convert into floating storage and regasification units. However, they are also currently under development on 10.6 gigawatts of natural gas-fired power plants in Brazil and are currently evaluating or developing over 15 terminals elsewhere in Brazil, Ivory Coast, Mexico, and Vietnam, where it believes its hub-and-spoke approach will provide efficiencies compared to other infrastructures. Before the implementation of market reforms, state-owned Petrobras had a monopoly on the midstream gas transportation market. However, the state is expected to relinquish its ownership in the midstream markets by December of 2021, leaving room for private firms such as Hygo to perform these services. As reported on TheStreet.com, according to management in the Shell 2020 Outlook report, global liquefied natural gas trade has seen double-digit growth over the last three years, with liquefied natural gas demand forecasted to grow at 4% annually from 2019 to 2040. The commissioning of record amounts of natural gas liquefaction capacity in 2018 enabled natural gas trading to grow by 10%. And the use of natural gas in transportation is expected to more than quadruple from 2018 to 2050, according to the EIA's 2019 outlook. The company achieved profitability on an EBITDA basis in the first half of 2020, though revenue has been declining. Hygo Energy's IPO is set for Thursday, with pricing expected to come in between $18 and $21. Trading should then begin on Friday. Next, we have Phase 2 Biotech Pax Medica, ticker PXMD. According to Nasdaq.com, the company's lead candidate, Pax101, an intravenous formulation of Suramin, is currently in a Phase 2B clinical trial at six sites in South Africa for the treatment of autism spectrum disorder, with data expected in early 2021. With no products to market, the company has not generated any revenue at this time. Pax Medica plans to raise $15 million at a market cap of $59 million at its IPO, which as of this recording, I don't have a date for. They look to price between $5.50 and $6.50. And last but not least, we have the largest deal of the week, GoodRx, ticker GDRx, who plans to raise $900 million at an $11.2 billion market cap. The company operates in the large prescription drug market, providing a mobile app and website that allows consumers to easily compare drug prices and has delivered strong growth over the last several years. I don't know about you, but I've seen a ton of commercials from them and the service they provide looks enticing, although admittedly I've never used it. While lower margin offerings have weight on gross margin, GoodRx is profitable and growing revenue and net profits. The company is also generating strong cash flow. The company's primary offers include prescription price comparison, subscriptions, pharmaceutical manufacturer solutions, and telehealth services through GoodRx Care. Currently, the majority of the revenue is coming from advertising. 
According to a 2020 market research report by IBIS World, the U.S. pharmacy and drugstore market is an estimated $312 billion in total value in 2020, which represents an approximate 3.3% growth rate over 2019. Further growth is expected due to an aging population in the United States, increasing demand for prescription drugs, as well as because of an increase in the number and selection of available drugs, particularly for chronic conditions. As for competition, GoodRx's pharmaceutical manufacturing solutions offering competes for advertising dollars with a number of other online sites, while its telehealth services competes with companies such as Teladoc, MD Live, Doctor on Demand, and Amwell, who just had their IPO this past week. Based on brand recognition and impressive financials, I feel that GoodRx's IPO is the one that will garner the most attention this week. The IPO is scheduled for Tuesday, with pricing anticipated in the range of $24 to $28. Trading will then begin on Wednesday. Let's now check up on this week's lockup expirations and notable quiet periods ending. And for anyone new to the channel that isn't sure why we cover these, I'll link a video on the IPO process in the description. Like last week, we have no lockups expiring this week, which makes sense as we think about what was going on in the world six months ago. Needless to say, no IPOs were launching in the middle of March. However, we do have a notable quiet period ending, and that is for Xpeng, ticker XPEV. The company is an automaker in China that manufactures electric vehicles in the mid to high end segment. The stock is trading in the upper teens after having been at $15 and peaking at over $23 on its first day of trading. We'll have to see if any research reports or information from the company come out that might further boost the stock upwards. And that's all I got. I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, please push that like button and share with your friends and on any of your social media sites and forums you're on. It's a way for you to help me grow the channel so we can keep looking at doing bigger and better things on here. And if you're new to the channel or just an occasional visitor, we'd love to have you join the community. After all, it's free. You just got to hit that red subscribe button. With that, thank you for watching, and until next time, have a great day.